Hi everybody, Zari Ballard here. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that like and the bell if you want to get notified. So we're going to get right into it today. First of all, I want to tell you that I do have a new book out, Vacancy in the Rabbit Hole, and it is How to Escape Toxic Love, Redefine Self-Worth, and Beat Every Narcissist at the Game of Life. Make sure you hook up with it. Amazon, and it's going to be on Audible, so make sure you check it out. Okay, today we're going to talk about narcissistic partners and the pathological relationship agenda. What is that agenda anyway? And I've made some notes, and I'm going to break it down for you. Okay, and we're going to do it in three steps. What is a narcissist up to? What is his main agenda when he's making you crazy and sick and not feeling good and all that? You know, wanting to like pull your hair out and worse, you know? What is he doing? Okay, so we're going to tell you what he's doing. Number one, it's all about what they can get away with. This is really important. You have to know this. Okay? It's all about what they can get away with. Meaning that they want to be able to do whatever they want, whenever they want, with whoever they want, at anyone's expense. And every time that you pick up the phone after a discard or after a silent treatment, every single time that you pick up the phone, you answer a text, even if the text says, fuck you, okay? doesn't matter. He'll consider it a win. And you're just going to end up feeling bad that you got back into it. That's usually what everybody says when they call me. Oh, I feel bad. I shouldn't let myself do that. So it's everything is all about what they can get away with. Not only with you, with friends, with co-workers, with family. It, it gives them a thrill. Um, it makes them feel good. They want to do bad things to you. So you will accept that text or unblock them, okay, or suddenly be following them on social media after being strong for a little while. That's considered a win, and they're worth, they'll, they're willing to wait for that. So, number two, they know right from wrong. They just don't give a shit. You need to understand that as well. So when you think, well, I couldn't possibly know that he was doing that, maybe he doesn't understand that he hurt me. Oh, yeah. He does. He understands all too well, and that's why he did it. It's all about crossing the personal boundaries. It's not right to cross somebody's personal boundaries. And if you've been with someone long enough, then you know what those personal boundaries are. And what the narc does in the very beginning, during the love bombing stage, while he's wooing you, and while he's creating what I call the soulmate effect, okay, which they know how to do so good, while he's doing all that, He's paying attention to your, to what could possibly be your personal boundaries. And he's very smart. He listens. He understands what your personal boundaries are. And he will hold them in the back of his mind so he can cross them. I, I, I usually say that as the relationship progresses, they have a, a secret bag, a per, it's an emergency personal boundaries bag, where they just reach in and pull out one that you just didn't even know you even had. Which is what my ex used to do to me. Every time I thought that he couldn't possibly top him doing what he did to hurt me this time, he would the next time. Every single time he topped it. And every single time I was as inconsolable as the first time. Because I didn't get it. It's what they do. Okay, They know right from wrong. It doesn't matter whether they say they're sorry. And they will grovel. Some will grovel. Others will just give you the silent treatment. But they know right from wrong, and they just don't care. Number three, managing down your expectations. This is part of the agenda. It's it's probably, actually, it's probably the most important one. Of course, you always start the relationship with high standards. You kind of throw that out there. That's what the narcissist, he or she, that's kind of what they expect you to expect. So what happens is over the course of the relationship, by doing all those things that they want to get away with and beating you down and getting you to pick up that phone and, you know, answer the door and, you know, open up the email and read the text and respond to it. You do that enough times and you, we all know how our expectations get managed down, dwindled, picked away, like, you know, 
death by a thousand cuts, little by little, chipping away at our expectations until we don't have any. Okay, until we will accept crumbs of attention and the narc can get away with whatever he wants. He gets away with more and more. And all you do is give and give and give unconditionally. And you don't want anything in return. And that's exactly what you get. Nothing. I mean, he has got it. He's got it made. He's not going to worry too much. He's not going to worry if he cheats because he can talk his way out of it with by creating plausible deniability. And he, it will be so hurtful that you will do anything to relieve the separation anxiety and come back. And you're you will be managed down to nothing where you start to be not okay but accepting of ridiculous situations within the relationship so why do they do all this why do they go why do they even bother you know some clients will ask me but why does he even bother with me like why would you do that whenever you ask yourself that whenever you wake up and you're like, why would he do that to me? Why would anybody do that? Why would he or she hurt me like that or say that or do that in front of me or whatever? The answer is easy because they're not. That's why. That's it. That's all there is. It's what they do. It's who they are. That's their whole world. Okay? They're not normal people. They don't have compassion. They don't have remorse. They don't have sympathy or empathy, and they don't feel guilt. They have none of that. They can fake it. They can fake those emotions, sure, and sometimes it actually looks. Some can even cry. Some will cry. It doesn't matter. They don't have that at all. So when you ask yourself, why would they do that? Instead of beating yourself up over it, trying to figure it out, studying online, reading, because they're narcs, that's why. It's what they do. It's who they are. They're always going to be that way to the end of time. You can't change them, not with love, not with therapy, and not with any magic pill. You cannot change it. It is a real disorder with universal symptoms across the board, across the world, across the continents, across cultures, colors. That's why our stories are interchangeable, because it's very real. None of this is your fault. Okay, if you're, if you're thinking about getting out or if you've already gotten out, but you're just having a hard time dealing with it. Sometimes we, we like to bring a little guilt. Maybe I did this. Maybe I did that. I want to take my accountability for it. You know what? Do all that later. Right now, you didn't do a fucking thing wrong. Let's talk about what your biggest crimes were. You wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt? That's one crime. Realizing that none of us are perfect. So... You want to overlook the little things. That's crime number two. Not wanting to make mountains out of molehills. Sometimes when you're with a narc, when things go wrong, you kind of feel like if other people were looking in on it, they would think that you were making a big deal about nothing. You're not. Another big crime is wanting to make it work. Focusing on the good things. These are all, these are your crimes. And these are your, if these are actually your biggest crimes. Shame on you. Off with your head. Think about it. Those are really your biggest crimes. When you're with the narc, the crimes that you commit, the crimes that you are always getting punished for, are actually, to your credit, really, mostly good human qualities. Wanting to give the benefit of the doubt, being humble, being compassionate, wanting to make it work, you know, not being a quitter. That's what you get punished for. Those are your biggest crimes. We already know what the narc's crimes are. So the agenda is to pretty much destroy it. To get you eventually to Q status. Where, you know, you, you fall into the, on the totem pole. Most of the time, you know, if you've been with them long enough or whatever, you'll be at the top as the fallback girl. Which, by the way, is, it doesn't mean that you're the favorite it just means that you're the easiest. And he knows he knows exactly what to do to get under your skin. He knows exactly what to do to hurt your feelings. He knows how to intimidate you. He knows how to, he's trained you to be quiet. 
and he's got you in your compartment. And that's, of course, back to that again. Narcs are compartment managers. They move smoothly and seamlessly from one compartment to the next. Your compartment is set in stone during the love bombing stage. That's when he figures it all out. He doesn't love anything. He doesn't like anything. And he doesn't hate anything, even though sometimes it feels like he loves you and sometimes it feels like he hates you. Actually, he has, he's pretty indifferent. We make ourselves in our own heads out to be way more important to the narc than we are. That's what, that's the, that's the tough pill that we need to swallow. So if you can do that, if you can realize it's not your fault, your biggest crimes are having good qualities that he tries to mirror, and in the beginning he does, but that falls apart pretty quickly during the devalue stage. And then ultimately the discard. Whether you do it or he does it, it doesn't matter. The fact is, it's not a sustainable situation. The agenda is to break your spirit, to get you down, to bring you down, to make you a shell of a person you were when he met you, or she met you. You know what I'm talking about. So it's not your fault. There is a true agenda. This person does not have good intention. It's all about intention. Check out my books. My books are When Love is a Lie. Okay, that's the popular one, the most popular one. And my new one, Vacancy in the Relationship Rabbit Hole. And that'll tell you how to get over it all. Little tricks and tips. Whether you're, when you get out of it, how not to go back into it. And I'm going to be uh, trying to make more videos. If you have any suggestions, any topics that you want me to talk about, or then leave it, leave a message for me in the comments. Okay. So I hope you have a wonderful week. Be sure to visit me on the NarcissisticPersonality.com, and always come back to the YouTube channel and check out my videos. So you have yourself a wonderful day, and I will see you next time. Bye.